What's up YouTube? This is All Things Quick. Today we have another video for you. We're doing something bigger than last time. Today we are removing the motor and the transmission from one of these cars. I was trying to decide which one that I want to actually do. And I think today, because this one's already prepped, I'm going to take this motor and this transmission out of this car. I need this 3 liter in this car to be able to start building this and tearing it apart and getting it ready for some special things that are happening with that. The automatic transmission in this car is just going to be sold to someone one for parts it works it functions fine so if you need a automatic transmission from an e46 hit me up in the comments and you can buy that for a dirt cheap this car is a 2.5 liter and it has a s5d five-speed transmission in it so i'll be using the transmission from this car and the motor from this car and that's how it's going to be paired up first i'm going to get at taking the motor and the transmission out of this car so right now i have everything i need for success today i have my toolboxes i have my tools in them i have my strap i have I have an engine hoist, I have my battery I just got from the wreckers, and I got my jack, and I have two cars to play around with. So we're just gonna pull this car out, I'm gonna stick the battery in that one, and pull it out so then we can start working on it. So we're just gonna remove the positive and negative terminal on this battery here. That's a 10 mil. And then just a 13 mil, 13 mil right here on this bracket. That will take this bracket out, pull your battery out and swap in the next one. This one's a lot smaller, but she'll do the trick. If you guys remember from the last video, this car is ridiculously loud. And actually, so is the other one because the manifolds are off of both of them. Okay, I'm just gonna jack this thing up. Okay, I just hooked up my airlines. I got my ratchet. We're gonna start with these headlights here. This is an eight mil. Take those off to get the side marker out as a Phillips that we're gonna use a hand tool. Then we'll get this side as well. This one right inside here, you have to use a Phillips screwdriver to get that side marker out. And then these guys will just slide right out just like that. Then you can just disconnect the connector at the back. Or you can take the whole light bulb out just by turning this sideways, but we don't need to do that. Now we're going to go for this one. This one's free as well. Disconnect the connector. Now in the back side of the headlight here, you just have to take out all four of these connectors here. One, two, three and four. That's all the sensors from your headlight. And then while we're in here, we can take off this component. This is for the AC. And then we can take off the fan connector. The reason we're taking them all off like that is because the whole front end of this car needs to come off. Same thing with this side. One, two, three, four. And now the headlights are disconnected. Bottom section has little clips on it. This can just slide right out. Careful that you don't break the plastic on it. Right inside of here, there is, can't see it, but there's a little eight mil, little eight mil bolt right in there. So I know we're kind of all over the place, but I'm going to take the wheels off because I want to take the wheel liners out and have access to the whole bottom end there. Not just for now, but for later as well. So if anybody watched the first episode, I cleaned up these wheels so that they would come off easy. And I didn't do this one, so now this one's stuck on here. Okay, I'm just gonna finish one thing before I start another. Right in here, there's the last bolt for the headlight. So with that bolt out, this can just slide right out. And there's your headlight. We'll do the same thing with the driver's side. And with that bolt out, this can just slide right out. This thing just popped off, but it can just go right back. No big deal. So I'm just taking off these bolts and this wheel liner here. They're 5 16 Then you can just take these rivets out with a trim tool and then just hold the thing down. 
So if you're trying to do this to save this stuff, then use a trim tool on these. But these rivets here, the little plastic rivets, I just cut them off because I'm not going to reuse this one. I don't need to keep the liner in here. There's about 10 of these bolts. They're all throughout this thing here and then a few of them underneath. You need to take all of them off to get this down and then just work your way and just pull it down and it will eventually come down. So now that that wheel liner is out, we can start our junk pile. So that is junk. In fact, if anyone wants to know why the E46 likes to rust in spots like these, it's because dirt and debris gets stuck up in here. And then when it does, it collects moisture and water and then it just sits there and sits there and sits there until it starts blowing through and rusting like that. Just got this little thermostat sensor out of the bottom of this bumper piece here. And this is the second piece of our junk pile. Bumper here is held on by that bolt, which is actually connected to the fender. And then there's two rivets, plastic ones that you need to get rid of. So we just got that one bolt off from right here. What we can do is unhook this sensor here for the fog light. From the front here, you can actually take off this bolt right there. It's a 10 mil. And then for all that, you would just repeat that on the other side. You can take the sensor out of this guy. Then there will be a bunch of bolts. One, two, three, four, five, and then there's a couple underneath there. And that is number two. And this is our next contestant for the junk pile. Now we just have this 10 mil bolt right here on the fender. In the front bumper, right here and right there, there's a little notch there made for the bumper bolts. The bumper bolts are an E12, an inverted torque. This one I always like to do by hand. It can be pretty rusty. This one was good. So then when the bolt comes out, it's going to look like that when it comes out. And then we just repeat on the other side. And so once you're done this, you can just yank at these. They're on these little tabs right there come off try not to break it like I just did once you get those little clips off then you just wiggle the bumper back and forth and then it will pop right off of that same with the other one I have a bolt that's stuck in the other one but it's supposed to just wiggle off just like that I had to mess around with that but I got both those bolts out and now same thing like last time so your horn in here, one's for a high pitch noise and one's for a low pitch noise there's one on each side to so take the sensor out of both sensor out of that one and then sensor out of this one and then that's your whole bumper disconnect and so these crash bar supports right here there's three nuts on each of them we're gonna take those off with a 13 mil and so you can see how that thing just shifted like that so that whole front end is loose except for the top right here and right here there's four 10 mil bolts but we're gonna leave those for a little bit because I need to drain the fluid out of the radiator so right here on the bottom there is a small little blue tab under here and it has a spot for a flathead you just need to crack that open it's good practice to open up your radiator cap or your expansion tank cap leave it off so that the air can flow through that down into here freely so that you just open this thing up and it will start to leak out and there you go that's your coolant draining out there and it looked like he used windshield washer fluid for his coolant that's what it looks like to be honest but who knows maybe that's actual BMW stuff if it is good for him you can hear that thing draining out that's why you keep the cap off the top so then it can freely suck air through the top and go through the bottom okay so that's mostly drained out i'm gonna go and plug this thing back up we're gonna pull this cooler off of the alternator or an air duct or whatever you want to call it that can come off that will save for later but there is a coolant hose right here i'd like to get at there's an easier way to do this and that's by taking the top stuff off first but Man, you can tell this has not been off forever. If ever. I don't even know if it's ever been off. I have a tiny bit of lubricant. Okay, switching rolls for a second. I'm gonna try to get these top ones off. It seems like, honestly, this car has been nothing but a headache for me, so it seems like everything that is on here is super stuck, not taken care of. It's just really difficult to get all this stuff off. Never really had too many problems with E46s before, but this car in particular is a little tougher than most. So as I was saying that, this actually started to crack open, which is good and hopeful. Hopefully it just pops right off for me. Please just pop off for me. Please, please. It's almost there. 
There we go, she's off. And that is one of four. The next one is underneath this power steering cooler. This goes to the middle of the expansion tank. Hopefully that just pops off too. That'd be awesome, be real cool. Oh, hey, would you look at that? Nice, that one just popped right off. The last video I put this thing in here, but it seems like we need to take it out right away, which is fine. There's another coolant hose down at the bottom here, right there. I'm gonna pop that tab off of there. There's actually a temperature sensor right in there. I'm gonna remove this, that guy there. So I just slid that tab up. We can pull this guy off. I feel like this is gonna leak everywhere. And if it does, that sucks, because my thing's on the other side. Maybe I should put it underneath just in case. Oh, that's hard. I just did that off camera because I needed two hands, but good thing I put my little jug there. I just used channel locks to get that one off. I don't want to talk about how hard that was to get off. So now that that's all off, we can work on this. There's two bolts right here and right here. And there's two bolts right here and right here. <laughs> So at this point you have two options, but I like to do it this way. You can take those power steering coolers off and just let it drain out, or you can keep that on, but you have to take more off the front end. To do that, I like to do it this way. Sometimes those stick shut, so I compress them with a pair of channel locks. You can see the bottom one there is already compressed and the top one is not, because they get filled with debris. It's better to do that first and then try to get them out. This is impossible to show you on camera, so I did that. Just let that drain out. Since it's a super big mess now, I'm just gonna spray it down lightly with some brake cleaner just to get most of the stuff off. I said lightly, but more than lightly. Be generous. Just makes it easier to work with. So there's this hood latch wire. That just needs to be disconnected underneath here. Yeah, you can see it right there. That thing's rusted out. What we're gonna do with this car is we're gonna do like with the last one, we're gonna end up putting hood pins in here because I mean, that that's all rusted out. That That's no good. That's, that's bound to break. So we're gonna take that out and then this front end can quite literally just slide right off. You know, the fun thing about building your own car is that when you really get tired of doing something, you can just come in and you can just start cutting stuff just because you feel like it. So that's that. And that's how the front end slides right off. If you're trying to save stuff, don't do that. I don't even know which car I'm gonna use yet, but either way, that's pretty rusty, so I'm gonna end up doing hood pins on this car. See, look at this thing here. This was bound to go at some point anyways, so good thing that I cut that off. The radiator itself sits on two supports, one right there, one right there. There's also a sensor on the bottom of the expansion tank. That's a level sensor. On the bottom, there is a transmission cooler. There's a tab right on the top right there. Pull that up and this thing will come free. So now this radiator and the fan shroud and the AC rad and all that stuff can just slide right out now. <sighs> okay, so this is where we're at now. Got the whole front end of the car off. Now there's just top end stuff to do. A few things with the engine wiring harness. And then we need to start unbolting the drive shaft and the transfer case down in the bottom. Also, we'll be disconnecting the entire subframe as well as the two motor mounts that are right there. And there's one on the other side, but you can't see it right now. So I was going to do a full video on removing the motor and the transmission out of this car, but I'm running a little late right now and I had to do some other stuff so I'm gonna end the video right here and next time we're gonna be getting at the motor and the transmission on this car to completely remove it so for today we're just gonna have this front end stuff as one video and then we're gonna go into the next one for getting the motor and trans out so with that being said this is the end of the video and if you like that video definitely give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it if it helped you out if you haven't subscribed definitely hit that subscribe button because what we're doing with these two cars right here is going to be crazy and we're doing an entire series on it bolt by bolt, part by part, and I'm just trying to help some people out and record everything that I'm doing during the process of me building these cars start to finish. So hit that subscribe button and definitely stay tuned to this series. And if you haven't checked out our Discord server, definitely check that out. Links in the description. It's a full community of people who like to build cars, build motors, do repairs, diagnostics, and people that just genuinely want to learn how to do it for themselves. With that being said, do all that stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later. Later.